What's up guys, today I wanted to go over an update with regards to my GPT-J videos. Specifically, I mentioned in those videos that eventually the GPT-J model would be added to Hugging Face, and well, as of a couple weeks ago, it officially has been added. I've gone ahead and updated both the GBTJ Jupyter Notebook as well as the repo for fine-tuning GBTJ on a custom data set using GPUs. I'll go ahead and go over a few of the differences, starting with the GPTJ Jupyter Notebook. Before I do so though, if you ever wish to follow the original steps in the video I made for this notebook, you always can go to the branches and select the original YouTube branch. So here we are inside of the new GPTJ notebook. All steps with regard to setting up the Anaconda environment, the kernel for the Jupyter notebook remain the same. So refer to that video for steps on how to get to this step that we are at now. So by having GPTJ officially included inside the Hugging Face library, as I mentioned in my original video, we can now load the model with one single line. There is no longer a need to download the weights and convert them. So let's now just quickly walk through this notebook. We'll first have to install the dependencies such as CUDA Toolkit, uh, and of course we'll have to install Transformers, which is the Hugging Face package. At this point in the previous method, we would have to go about downloading the weights of GPTJ and go about converting them using a long script. However, now that it is in uh, the Hugging Face library officially, we can load it with a single line of code. So let's go ahead and do that. Important to note is that loading the model will still take a decent bit of time and the resource usage is still relatively high. As you can see here with the climbing RAM usage, we are around 30 gigabytes of RAM right now and it's still loading. So as we can see, it peaked out around 40 gigabytes of RAM. So if you wish to load the model, you will need roughly 40 gigabytes of RAM or maybe 32 gigabytes of RAM and use a large swap in order to get the model to memory. But after loading the model, the RAM usage drops to roughly 32 gigabytes. And the RAM usage will likely further decrease if needed uh, on a lower spec system because as we can see using NVIDIA SMI we can see that the model is loaded into the video RAM and is no longer needed in the CPU RAM. So now that the model is loaded we now need to load the tokenizer for the model which again is very simple we just uh, use the tokenizer from the Hung Face uh, library and one line of code done pretty quickly and then we need to make sure that the model is in evaluation mode so we just do model.eval and that should be good and now we're at the part where we can give it uh, an input so for this example I gave it the input hello my name is Blake and uh, and so we go ahead and encode that with the tokenizer you make sure that the input is interpreted as a string and we return the tensors and we put those on the GPU so we call CUDA and then I generate the output with these parameters here uh, note, something to know is that the max length is 20 so it will be a smaller output and then these parameters here you'll have to go ahead and play around with to find what, or what works best for your use case so let's go ahead and run it and then print it and then the output is, hello, my name is Blake, and this is a discussion of all the different sources of value. So, sounds like a beginning of an interesting talk. Um, so, I'm, I'm very happy with the output. And as you can see, the process now for running GBTJ is much, much simpler. Uh, the need for a notebook almost isn't needed. You could combine all these steps into probably... Uh, outside of the installation is probably less than 20 lines of code and uh, so it's very good that, that GPTJ has been added to Hugging Face. It makes using this amazing model much easier. So next we'll go over the changes that have occurred with the fine-tuning repo. 
First, let's look at the requirements. So now we install again Torch and CUDA and the like uh, transformers and data sets. We don't have to um, install the specific version of transformers like we were in the previous method. Uh, we still need to clone Deep Speed and we still need to build it, but all the other steps of downloading the weights, converting them, downloading and cloning mesh transformers, the specific version, all that no longer needs to be done. So just the normal uh, installations, cloning Deep Speed, building it, and DS report that, if you recall, uh, if it is successfully installed, will show that all the modules are installed. Going back to the README, we can see that after we have installed the requirements, the only thing we need to do is put our train and validation CSV into the fine tune repo like before. And I have a video on how to make your own train CSV and validation CSV if you haven't seen that already. So in my example, we would go to these quotes data set, copy these two files here, and we will paste it into the fine tuning repo here. Once we have everything installed and have our data in the correct location, the last step is to run the fine tuning code with the appropriate flags to fine tune the model. And I have an example inside the fine tuning repo as we can see here. So this is just an example of what you may run. So I have the config file like I go over in the previous video on fine tuning GBTJ. Here is a change. So instead of calling it GBTJ, we're giving the name of the string used for hugging face. And this will then pull down GBTJ and we'll use that to train. We have our CSV files, SB. Uh, FP16. Number of epics, this is largely dependent upon your data set, ha how large it is, things like that. About steps, you're going to want to change this to a larger number, uh, but this is just what I have in this example. Uh, gradient, accumula gradient accumulation steps, 32, that's a good value to keep it at. Uh, I'm on a 3090, unless you have a better GPU than that. Uh, you're going to keep this at one, one uh, batch size of one. And how many, how many do you want to save and how often do you want to save? Again, for the number of steps, you likely want to increase that to a larger value depending upon the size of your data set. I will now go ahead and walk through the steps I just went over. So I will first, uh, I already installed the requirements, but DS report, you should see something along these lines. You just see yes, okay. So that means I have um, deep speed installed and we should be good in that aspect. Let's now go ahead and copy over the CSV files into their appropriate location. So let's go to quotes and we'll go ahead and copy all the CSV files into the fine tuning repo. So that's good. We'll go into the fine tuning repo and we want to run the example run. So here we have the example run, and as I mentioned already, you'll likely want to increase the steps used for evaluating and saving from one and two for evaluating and saving to a higher value, but for, the, for this video, I have it set at those values. So let's go ahead and paste this, and let's go ahead and keep an eye on our resource usage. So as we can see that took several minutes but now we should be all well on to training. The model has been loaded, as we can see here, into the VRAM. And since DeepSpeed uses the CPU RAM and the VRAM to train, we see a rapid increase in the resources here. And if you watch my previous video, you'll know that we almost peak out all the way with 128 gigabytes of RAM.
and we actually are peeking out with uh, this model. We've uh, used roughly three gigabytes of the swap, but we are training now. So uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have enough swap allocated for training, even uh, with 120 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, if you've watched my previous video, you'll know that when you save, you use even more of the swap. So that is something to keep in mind. After training, evaluating, and saving checkpoints, we need to convert those checkpoint weights into a usable format due to the special formatting used by Deep Speed. I go over this in a previous video, but I'll go ahead and play it now for ease of access. It's now been saved, which took an additional 300 seconds roughly. Taking a look at the checkpoint, you can see that it is massive. It is 84.9 gigabytes. Before we can use this model though, we need to do one more thing to it. Let's navigate to the folder that we put the checkpoint in, which is fine tune, and then checkpoint two. We need to run an included program called 02FP32. What this does is it converts the zero saved model into a floating point 32 model. If we take a look at the flags, we can see that it needs two arguments. It needs the checkpoint dir and it needs the output file name. Let's go ahead and run that again, but with those arguments. So here we are, we're gonna run the zero to FP32 command. We're gonna give it the current directory that we're in and we're gonna call it pytorchmodel.bin, which is the name that the model needs to be in order for you to load it. We'll see how long it takes. So the conversion from zero to FP32 is finally finished. It took 11 minutes and 32 seconds. But at this point, we could now load the model and use it just like I went over in my first video over GPT-J6B. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you found this helpful and I hope you can appreciate just how much easier Hugging Face makes using and training these models. If you liked the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. I hope to return to making videos more consistently now and I'll be covering topics including AI, cryptocurrency, and the latest in tech in general. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing if you enjoyed my videos. I'd also like to again remind everyone of the Discord. We have solid chats in the Discord about a variety of topics, mainly focused around GBTJ. So if you'd like to participate in that, consider joining the Discord. As always, thanks so much for watching and please have a great day.